Hey there, Tesla fans, Aaron Rath here with Rats Tesla, and this video is a little bit different. It's Monday morning, I'm about ready to head out to work, and I wanted to give those prospective Tesla owners kind of a what's it like in the week of owning a Tesla. Daily driving, going through the routine, doing what you gotta do to get by and make the payment on the Tesla. But what's it like owning that Tesla? And what, what do I do on a weekly basis? So I will tell you, I start off that during the summertime, when the temperatures are warmer, I charge less. I don't need as much battery power because I don't burn as much battery when it's nice outside. The car is more efficient. So for a, a weekly, daily drive, um, back and forth to work, I charge my car to 75%. I leave it at 75% and charge it that overnight. And then uh, I... I drive back and forth to work and I, I charge every night. Um, I kind of go by the mantra I heard up front and that's ABC, always be charging. So when I get home, I plug in. But before we get going too far in today's video, I want to thank our sponsor for today's video and that's Drive, drive Eyewear. Eyewear. It's a sunglass company that is Tesla inspired eyewear. They have four different styles of glasses. They have Giga, Terra, Lith, and May after Elon's mom's name. Uh, you can get each one of those in uh, different colors with different lenses from mirrored to regular. They also have prescription lenses now and you can order that by going to driveeyewear.com. Really great glasses. I have a pair. I love them. I have the Lith and I have the Gigas on the way. They're super comfortable. They're all metal. They're lightweight. They're unisex and they are super comfortable and they run anywhere from about $115 to $195 for the non-prescription pair of glasses. But I tell you, go check them out today and make sure you use the discount code RATSTESLA at checkout. That'll save you 10% on your sunglasses and these are top-notch sunglasses. I keep these in my car and that's why I've bought a second pair so that I can have a pair that I don't wear that I wear outside of my car and a pair that I leave in my car because here in Northern Colorado, we get a ton of sun and I wear my sunglasses a lot. So make sure you check out the four different styles of sunglasses at driveeyewear.com and use Rats Tesla at checkout. All right, now that we've heard from Drive Eyewear, let's get going. First thing, obviously, is you need to unplug your Tesla because you can't drive if your Tesla's plugged in. It will not even let you put it in and drive. So I have a little setup here. I had a NEMA 1450 outlet installed and then a, an adapter to the to the portable charger, the mobile charger that you can purchase now for $200. You can also get the other charger for $400 to put on the wall, but I think this $200 one is fine. If I travel, I take it down and take it with me and take this whole thing, this little holder thing, um, I bought off of Amazon. I think it was like 15 bucks. I'll put a link down below. But um, I, I, from my perspective, I would recommend getting the $200 mobile charger versus the $400 uh, wall charger. I think this is perfectly fine. And like I said, you can take it off when you're going on road trips. You know you're getting ready to travel. So just charge up the night before. Make sure that you put a sticky on your steering wheel it says take mobile charger and, and grab it and take it with you. So without further ado, let's uh let's get in and, and get going. Now one thing you'll notice is that my car already has my work address in it. It knows we're going to work because it's a weekday and uh, I have it set up so so it does that. So it says it's gonna take 43 minutes, 28 miles. Um if we pull it down and scroll to the bottom, it'll tell us that when we get there, we're gonna have 61% and 50% when we get home. So um, it takes about 14% to get there and about 11% to get home. And that's mostly just because of the hills. So I'm not gonna bore you with the drive. It's an FSD drive. I do typically use full self driving on my way to work, but we're not gonna do that uh, bore you with that drive today. Maybe later on in the week, I'll show you pieces, but, uh, I'll pick you back up once I get to work. All right. Just made it to work. And, uh, my, my efficiency graph, hold on, let me switch you around. My efficiency graph said we were supposed to be here with 61%. We're actually here with 63%. So 
like I said, when the temperatures are warmer, that's why I changed the, the charging limit that I charged to. It's good to bounce that around and not always charge to the same thing. Kind of creates a little memory um, in your car if you always charge to the same thing. You shouldn't charge to 100% unless you're going on a big trip and you really want to leave almost right after you hit 100%. Um, and also remember, when your car's at 100%, down to about 98%, your regenerative braking is going to be reduced. At 100%, you will not have regen braking at all, but below that, it'll be reduced because there's not a lot of places to store that energy, obviously, if you're at full charge. But, so, during the summertime, when it gets hotter, I lower my charging percentage down to 75%. In the winter time, when my car is less efficient because it's cold, I charge to 85%. If I have extra driving to do that day, sometimes I'll put it up to 90%. I may actually this summer, just for a little while, when I know that all I'm doing is going to work and back, I may run my car up to just 50%. So I use that lower half of the battery, but um, yeah, that's that's where we're sitting, 63%. It's a 30-mile drive for me to work, so it took 12% battery to get to work. And uh, we'll go into work, and then we'll catch you on the other side of work and see what the battery sits at. I do leave sentry mode on in the work parking lot because we're kind of off of a highway, and there's uh, been some issues with people messing with cars. So I leave sentry mode on at work. But uh, we'll go to go to work, we'll come back, we'll see what battery percentage we're sitting. All right, so when we stopped today, the car had 63%. It's now got 57% battery. Um, as I said, we use sentry mode while I'm here at work. So it was very hot out today. Um, it looks like sentry mode had some activity. So it ran about 6% off of my battery. So that'll 57% and we'll test this out and see what it is when we get home. And that Once we get home, we then, I can then determine if I need to charge for tomorrow or not. I know I could probably go up to like 85%, 90% and probably only have to charge every other day. But like I said, I like to vary my charge uh, limits. So in the summer, I run it to 75%. I may run it up to 90% tonight, and that way I don't have to charge on Tuesday or when, or I don't have to charge Tuesday night into Wednesday, and then I'll just charge Wednesday night. It doesn't really save a lot of money. It's like filling your tank up every time it gets down to half tank of gas. You're always putting a half tank gas in, so you think that you're saving yourself money. You're still spending the same amount of money. You're just filling up sooner. So it's all a matter of how much you think you're gonna drive compared to what you might need to, to complete that drive. That's why I pick 75%. Like I said, that's an easy number for me. And I know that even at 75%, when I've had a lot of activity in here during the day, I still have plenty of battery to get home, no issues. And then if we wanna go out for a dinner or drive around and do something else, I still have plenty of battery to take care of that as well. So let's get on the road and uh, we'll see what the battery sits at when we get home. All right, just pulled in and parked in my garage. We're sitting at 49%. So today's trip, 60 miles round trip, took 26% of the battery, went from 75% to 49%. Given that information, I could probably not charge tonight and be okay for tomorrow drive to work, but I'll probably plug it in simply because that will allow me if anything should come up and I need to take any extra driving. And I don't know if I'm gonna do any driving tonight. So typically I plug it in before I go to bed. I have, um, I have charging set so it charges during non-peak hours, but for me, it really doesn't matter. My, my charging is all the same. While I got your attention right here, I wanna get you to download the the app called Optowatt. We're going to talk about that in the next segment. That'll be tomorrow morning when we talk about how much it costs to charge the car overnight. So that's Optowatt. I'll put a, a little thing right here. And if you, if you uh, click on the, click on the link that I'll put down below, it'll get you, 
it'll get you a discount if you want it, or it'll get you $5 if you want it, and it'll give me $5. But if not, just download the app OptiWatt. It will, uh, it'll, it'll be something that you're going to want to have for the life of your Tesla, and it'll really be something that you want right away, because then you can track your charging percentage from day one of getting your car. So that'll do it for Monday. We'll check in on Tuesday. All right, it's Tuesday morning, and as we unplug the car, we'll take a look at OptiWatt here. Um, OptiWatt's the app I told you about earlier in the video, basically last night. This is Tuesday morning, but I'll put the OptiWatt stuff up here. So basically, on OptiWatt, it tells us that we charged for two hours and six minutes to get back to the 75% at a whopping $1.50. And I also noticed, too, that um, it actually says nine cents per kilowatt hour in the OptiWatt app. I need to adjust that because my electric company just adjusted it down to eight cents per kilowatt hour. So it's actually a little bit cheaper than a dollar fifty. So, I mean, like I said yesterday or earlier in this video, is you can charge to a big percentage and then um, run it down over a couple days. And if you live in an apartment or somewhere where it's harder to charge, I can understand you doing that. But if you live in a place, a house where you can charge every day, charge to a lower percentage, and then um, every night charge back up to that percentage, just enough to get you what you need. And now if you think you're going to need to drive more, obviously you're going to need to charge more, but 75% seems to be a good number for me in the summer. So let's go ahead and get to work. We'll check out our range when we get there. It's a little bit chillier today. We've got a few different factors in play and we'll see how that affects our drive into work. So just pulling out of my neighborhood and I wanted to bring something up. Sometimes when you charge your car, if you set it at 75%, you will notice that sometimes it'll charge to 77% and sometimes it'll charge to 73%. Nobody understands why i think it just has to do with the charging curve and where it is in the charge cycle when you reach the time that you need to depart maybe it started later than it thought it should have its calculations were off i don't know i'm not smart enough to figure that out i am an engineer but i'm not smart enough to figure that out but basically what what you should know is that at some points you could have less than you expected and today is one of those days as I get in and head out of the neighborhood, I notice that my car is at 73%, not 75% like I selected it to charge to. Many different factors could have played into that, but I don't know what those are, but I just wanted to interject that and let everybody know that the car was at 73% versus 75%, so it doesn't affect any calculations. All right, as you can see, we made it to work with 62%. Pretty efficient considering I drove today and didn't let FSD do the work. And uh, I was driving a little bit faster than FSD would. Uh, one thing that we're going to do today, we'll run a little bit of an experiment. Yesterday, we had sentry mode on and we lost 5%. Today, we're going to turn sentry mode off. And that way, we can see what that does to... The battery percentage realistically we should go um, all day today and when we come out we should have 62 percent battery left i will make sure that i do not check the app throughout the day but without sentry mode on we shouldn't have anything that causes the car to use battery life so like i said 62 percent and sentry mode is off without that red circle in there that means that sentry mode is off. So we will go to work. We'll check back in after. All right, heading on out. Car's at 58%. I did have to um, precondition the interior because when I looked at the app on my way out from work, the car was at 120 degrees on the interior. So I uh, kicked the climate control on and went out to my car, one of the perks of having the Tesla is being able to kick that climate control on before you go out to your car and having your car nice and cool. Totally forgot to film today when I got home, but the car's sitting at 51%. So the battery, or the car I should say, took 22% for today's usage 
again, 60 miles round trip back and forth to work. Um, I started the day at 73%. Today I turned off sentry mode and I drove home and I have 51%. Yesterday, I believe my day ended at 48%. I'll have to go back and check the videos, but I believe that's what it was. So you can see that we kind of come in around that 50% mark um, using a charge to, to 75%. I'll probably charge tonight, but again, you don't really need to, but that's today. So today is Tuesday. So we'll finish out Tuesday. We'll go ahead and plug it in. Sometimes I plug it in right before I go to bed. Sometimes I plug it in uh, when, I, when I get home. But I'm going to do it right now since that's when I'm thinking about it. And then I don't have to worry about forgetting to plug it in. But... The good news is if you forget to plug in or if I forget to plug in, I don't know what your driving situation is going to be, but if I forget to plug in, it's not going to be a problem. I'm still going to have enough charge to be able to get to work and back. I can do it in under 25%. So realistically, I could probably go two more days back and forth to work and not have to worry about it at all. That'll do it for Tuesday. We'll check back in Wednesday morning and see what this charging tonight will cost us all right good wednesday morning the birds are chirping and uh, we're about ready to head off to work i'm gonna unplug i just checked optowatt and we charged for two hours and 16 minutes and it was a dollar 61 or something like that i'll put it right up here so that you can see so as you can see two days of driving and we are right around three dollars for that so overall grand scheme of things not bad when you consider that gas here is about 470 a gallon so we haven't even used we've used a half a gallon of gas basically in uh pricing so not bad uh, we'll check out this rest of wednesday thursday and friday are going to be a little bit different for me but i'm still going to record them just so you can see the week in the life we'll have to adjust charging just a little bit tomorrow's drive is going to be a little bit farther but um, not a big deal. So uh, we're going to head off to work and uh, we'll check it when we get there. We're at 74% right now. So we'll check what our percentage is when we get to work. So it's an absolutely beautiful drive in this morning. Um, it's 57 degrees right now. So that should have a little bit of an impact on our efficiency on our drive today. Also, I'm using FSD for the drive-in today. We're about to disengage because the car decided it was going to go somewhere it shouldn't have. So if you um, don't have FSD or you don't have a Tesla, there's so many videos out there about full self-drive. Right now we're on 10.12.2. It's the new update that just happened in the last, I don't know, week or so. Uh, a couple weeks for some people, but for me it's been about a week. I do have a video for that. You can watch that um, on my channel, but uh, it sure does make the drive nice on on the way into work. It's a, it's a heck of a lot more relaxing of a drive than having to worry about everything. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. You still have to watch the roads, still have to pay attention, but it just seems like it takes some of the stress away from you and it makes the car more efficient it drives so that it is efficient so uh and it looks really cool check out these graphics i mean that's the graphics from the screen of the car that's uh pretty sweet as you look look around you can see um, and you can see brake lights and blinkers as well all right we got to work with 62 percent on the battery so took 12% to get here. Pretty efficient drive on my way to work. Like I said, 12%, but uh, I used FSD for most of the way. There are a few spots where I turned FSD off. Sorry about the spin move there. Forgot my coffee in my car. There are a few spots where I turned FSD off and got on the throttle a little bit, and that tends to affect the efficiency, but for the most part, drove FSD, so 62% on the battery. It's supposed to be a really hot one out here today. So we'll see what that does to the battery when we get off of work. 
All right, so we're getting in the car. It's got 56% battery left after sitting out here in the hot sun all day. And I've been running the AC, the climate to cool it off uh, as I walked out here. So with 56% battery left so far today has taken 18%. Sorry, I put my seatbelt on here. 18%, we're gonna drive home right now probably won't use FSD because during this time frame I don't like to use it in case it does weird things there's just too many people around so I, I don't tend to use it all my drives home sometimes I will when I get on the, the highway part of the drive I'll definitely flip it on it just makes it that much easier but um, so sometimes not as efficient on the drive home but we'll do our best today and we'll check in with you when we get home to see what our battery percentage is at. All right, pulled in after that drive at 46%. So we used 12% on the way home. We used 12% on the way there. So I think you're starting to see a trend here. Uh, when it's warmer outside, 30 miles for me is about 12%. So I could probably go, if I charged fully to 100%, I could go four days um, even charging to 90%, I could go three full days before I had to charge. But as I said earlier, whether you fill when you have a half a tank or an empty tank, you're still using the same amount of gas. So I just like to be charged and plugged in every day. That way, if something comes up and I need to drive a little bit further, I've always got the charge there. So that'll do it for Wednesday. We'll see tomorrow morning. I'm guessing about $1.50, $1.60 for charging. So you're starting to see a trend here. We're probably looking at about seven and a half dollars per week to drive back and forth to work, 60 miles round trip, 300 miles for the week, about seven bucks, somewhere in that range. We'll have final numbers on Friday, but both tomorrow and Friday are gonna have a little bit of drive, different drives to them. I have to go to different locations for work. So we'll talk about those in the morning and uh, we'll see what we got to do tomorrow and we'll see what we're charging to tonight. That'll do it for Wednesday. Stay with us. Don't go anywhere. We're almost, well, we're over halfway through the week. All right, today as we unplug, we are sitting at 90% battery and I ran it up to 90% because we're driving to Cheyenne, Wyoming today. It's about 60 miles each way, so 120 miles round trip. Just wanted to make sure that I had enough um, battery to get us there and back and then drive around in Cheyenne if we need to do anything. Not a lot of superchargers between here and there. Matter of fact, there's one uh, between here and there. There's one or two in Cheyenne, I believe. So I don't think, we'll, well, I know we won't need any supercharging for what we're going to go do. It just depends on what else we decide to do. But so I ran it up to 90%. Um, I will put up right here what it cost last night in, in Optowatt. I didn't look prior to recording the video. Okay, so I just jumped off and looked and I'm gonna put it right here. We charged for a little over four hours and it cost $3.01. So I think we're up to like $6 charging or $7.50, I'm not sure. Not remembering all the math, I'll put the math up here as well, but still well under $10 for charging for the week um, right now in where i live that would not even be two gallons of gas so <laughs> i mean if you're if you're wondering about the cost effectiveness of driving a tesla this shows you that it is very very cost effective to do so so we're going to make our day and then i'll get with you when our day is over tell you how many miles we drove what percentage is left and We'll plug it in and charge it. And I'm probably going to charge it to 90% for tomorrow as well because I've got a lot of driving I have to do and, and a little bit farther distance I have to go for some meetings. So but that'll do it for this short piece. Keep watching. We've still got some math to go and show you how effective a Tesla is driving it on a weekly basis for work and, and commuting, uh, that type of activity. So... Stick with us, we'll have mileage and cost here at the end of this video. All right, so we're back from our day uh, traveling north to Cheyenne. We left the house with 90% battery. It's 65 mile drive 
or 70 mile drive, excuse me, each way. So 140 miles. We veered off the path a little bit on the way back and stopped and got some lunch and then went through town. So instead of 140 miles, we went about 160 miles and we are currently sitting at 24%. So we use 66% for 144 miles, which in the grand scheme of things is really good. I mean, I still have enough that if I had to run to town or go do a quick errand, I would have enough battery left with 24%. I like to, uh, once in a while, bring it down below 20%. Uh, unfortunately, tomorrow I have more uh, distance, longer driving to do for some meetings that I have to attend. That'll do it for Thursday. I'll catch you on Friday, and then tomorrow afternoon, we'll wrap this video up. We'll talk about the final numbers, how much everything costs for the week, and what kind of efficiency you should expect if you're going to use your Tesla as a commuter vehicle. All right, heading out on Friday. Um, we have a little bit more driving to do. The one thing I did notice is I set my car to 90%, and it's at 93%. It doesn't normally do that, but I'm, I'm a little confused. Yeah, I'm looking at the dash up here and I'll show you. It's at 93% and I've verified I have the slider on the Tesla app at 90%. So it, it overcharged the car, not really a big deal, but um, I am getting ready to take a little bit longer drive. All right, so OptiWatt says that that was an expensive charge, mostly because I charged from 17% to 93%. And so that was a $5.34% charge. I'll put the information right here. Or, and it charged for over seven hours, which I would expect it to do it. You know, it's not gonna charge everything right away. It's gonna do it as slow as it needs to. And it was ready to go at 5.34 this morning, which, it typically is, but it doesn't necessarily overcharge as much as it does. Not a fan of it doing that. Um, so we'll have to see and double and triple check and make sure I don't have anything else set up. But I charge the 75% most of the time and it doesn't do that. Um, so I'll, I'll check it out. And when I follow up this afternoon, I'll follow up on that and see if there was any settings I had to change. But for now, I'm getting ready to head off to the post office. I got a mail off the floor mats to the winner of the floor mats and then I am heading off to a meeting and I will be back this afternoon a little bit longer drive but it'll be a fun meeting but uh thanks for watching so far stick with us we're gonna have all the math coming all up. right so it's Sunday afternoon and I just plugged my car in on Friday I drove my car I charged to 90 percent if you remember I charged my car to 90 percent for a longer trip I only used like 30% of the battery on that trip, so I decided not to plug my car in on Saturday or Sunday. I knew I wasn't going to have a lot of driving to do. So 90% lasted me all the way through Sunday. And realistically, I could go tomorrow because right now, as I'm looking at it, my car's at 42%. So let's take a quick look at what that all cost for the week and, and the mileage that we drove and, and what the week cost us. All right, so that'll wrap it up. I gotta re-record this ending. I actually recorded it once, but realized that my math was wrong. So I wanna run down through it and I'm gonna throw this up right here so you can read along with it. And I will read it from the basically the bottom to the top because I wrote it Monday and then upwards. So on Monday, we charged on Sunday night to 75%. It was $2.02 and that was a two hour, 47 minute charge and then we drove 60 miles. Tuesday was basically the same thing, except for it cost $1.32. Same for Wednesday, except for it was $1.50. On Wednesday night, I charged to 90% because Thursday we had a lot longer drive. That was $3.01 to charge up to 90%. And we drove 160 miles on Thursday. So on Friday, I thought I was gonna have a lot more driving. So again, charged to 90%. Uh, that cost $5.34 because we were all the way down to like 24%. It charged for seven hours and 20 minutes. And I drove 60 miles on Friday. So because I did that, I didn't charge Friday. So I, I drove 15 on 
Saturday and 15 on Sunday. So very little driving. So between Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I drove 90 miles and, uh, and you know, didn't, didn't do a ton of driving. So if we look at the bottom line, we drove 400 miles for the week from Monday through Sunday night. And our overall cost in charging was $13.19. If you average that out, that's 30 cents per mile. That's a pretty good per mileage, uh, per mile uh, uh, price. That 400 miles in my Ram pickup would have been over a tank of gas. So you're probably talking close to $100 or more of fuel costs in my Ram pickup. If I compare it to my wife's Tiguan, it would probably be around a tank of gas and i think a tank of gas in hers is about 60 dollars to fill it up so still a pretty good savings 45 50 dollars savings there that'll do it for today's video though thanks for sticking with us this long i know it was long but i wanted to talk about a week in the life with a tesla so as always, if you liked this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. That helps us out. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell as well. That'll that'll help us get to a thousand. YouTube keeps messing with my subscribers. As you get closer to a thousand, they go through and they delete spam ones or closed accounts. So I get close to a thousand, then they remove some. So help me out. Subscribe if you're not. And as always, we will catch you in the next video.